Hey guys, Tyler Clark here bringing you a new tutorial this week on something that I've probably gotten over a hundred emails about in the last two or three months. Is And the question I get is, um, you know, is how do you do the pumping sounds in your song? Or like, how do you make that wavy sound in your leads or something like that? Well, what, you know, most people it's kind of hard to figure out what they're actually asking, but I, what you know what it's been about is a thing called side chaining some of you may know it uh, and some of you may not uh, obviously a lot of you if you keep asking me about it but it's a very simple powerful technique that producers use all the time not only to you know add a cool effect to a sound but to also aid with the mixing and pulling out a kick drum and uh, stuff like that but I'm gonna show you how to implement that in FL Studio I'm sorry to the, you know, my other viewers that use other dolls other than FL Studio. FL Studio is really my main one and the only one I use and the only one I own, actually. So, you're stuck with that. So, to all you guys who use FL Studio, keep watching. If you don't, watch it anyway. <laughs> but, anyway, one, one quick thing before I start. Uh, shout out to this guy right here. I feel a little bit embarrassed because I cannot say his name. Uh, oh, you moy, moy mad. I don't know, but he's amazing at audio visualization uh, with Adobe After Effects. And he's actually he made the tutorial or the uh, intro for me that you've seen in this tutorial. And he's actually uh, coming up with some awesome stuff for me to react to uh, some of my songs. Uh, you know, you can just go to his channel and check it out. It's it's really awesome what he does, but. Just a quick shout out to him, and also, I probably have never done this before, because, but I always include them in the description or an annotation, but ch ch check its clan these are the guys that do my uh, uh, graphics for all my songs. All that cool, you know, all my cool graphics that you see, these guys right here, and especially Brandon Boss, he is awesome. I mean, he's come through clutch a lot of times helping me on stuff. But, um, you know, I've, I've been last minute, I need a graphic, I need a graphic. And, you know, he always answers the call. But awesome guys right there. You need to check them both out. Links will be in the description. But so anyway, let's get back to this here. All right, side chaining. It's popularly used in electro and trance kind of stuff like that. Um, Dash Berlin is a really popular trance artist I can think of that uses the uh, side chaining with a saw pad lead. Uh, which I figured out, I'm pretty sure which one he uses, and I'll show you. It's actually a preset in Nexus. Go, fig go figure. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I can't think of an electro guy off the top of my head, but this is what it sounds like with no side chaining. And be sure to watch this mixer right here on the lead. By the way, this is how I do side chaining. Most people may not even do it this way, but this is how I do it. But this is what it sounds like without side chaining with an electro top lead and kick drum. Kind of stale, you know, nothing really special, just really actually not good at all. You can't hear the kick drum, can't hear anything. And this is what you do with side chaining. Watch this uh, knob right here on the volume for your lead. I, that just, I mean, it changes everything up so nicely. I mean, it gives the song a rhythm. It gives it a feel. It sounds great, and I'm pulling in a snare drum. You're probably wondering what that is, but uh, I wanted to drop a snare in here just to give you a little taste of that. But so you can hear, I mean, it's just a world of difference from no side chain to side chain. And then same thing applies with trance. So that is what side chaining does. It uh, basically, when you have a sound that hits, it pulls down the volume level of the other one, or it can raise it, depending on how you set the side chaining. But I'm going to do this real quick right here. New. Uh, nope, don't save changes. 
All right, let's delete this. Bear with me. I want to show you guys from scratch. So you've got this. Uh, let's see. Bedrooms. All right. I love, love, love Vengeance sound samples. So anyway, you get your bass drum. Whoops. All right. You've got four lines of the bass drum that you want. There you go. So you have your bass drum. Now, what you want to do to pick out your lead. Grab Nexus here. Um, let's see which one is it that this one right here is one I'm almost positive uh, Dash Berlin uses uh, aircraft lead out of that. Let's see. Okay, so there you go. We have our kick and our lead, and you know, nothing special, no side chaining, nothing like that. You want to assign them to the mixer track. Uh, highlight the little green button with one left click, go down and right click on an insert for the mixer track, go link selected channels to this track. You just dropped that into your mixer track. So you can see it. Now you drop your lead, left click on it just one time to highlight the green bar beside it, go down, right click on an insert, link to so link selected channels and to this track. All right, there you go. And you can monitor it, you can see. Now here's where the side chaining part comes in. Very simple, very easy, very like, it's just awesome. You should use it in every song, just minutely to bring out your kick, in my opinion. Uh, but what you do is you can do one of two things. This is what I do because I think it gives a better feel to the kick drum and brings out your original kick drum anyway better. You right click and you clone what you've got. So it clones it. You just cloned your kick drum. So there it is twice. Uh, you're going to copy, you know, that pattern, place it here, paste, and I want you to rename this one, right click it, rename, side chain. All right, this is just for tutorial purposes, you know, later down the road you can do whatever crap you want, it really doesn't matter, but I do that on my tracks to help me keep up with it. Then you link that to the mixer track. All right, there we go. We have VEC, BD, Train C, blah, 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 side chain, and our lead. So this is what you do to side chain it after you have it everything good. You click, left click once onto the insert where it says side chain that you had. Click the drop down and select, uh, where is it at? Uh, Fruity Peak Controller. This is your magic tool here. The peak controller is where it's at. Now, you want to make sure this mute, mute button is highlighted right here. Because if it's not, you're going to hear the sound of that kick drum that you have laid. So, have that mute button highlighted. It mutes the sound. Alright, so you have your peak controller on this. And, like I said, you won't be able to hear the sound. But it's there. You can see it reacting within the peak controller, but it hasn't muted from the output. That's what you want. So you have, like I said, bass drum, side chain, and your lead. Now, what you do is you right click this right here. You right click it, you create, uh, nope, you link to controller. That's what you wanna click. This is what it's gonna bring up, that right there. Uh, MIDI controller, internal controller, mapping formula, and smoothing. What you're going to want is you're going to want to link this to your internal controller. So you click that drop down and pick, uh, you know, whichever you you want to pick peak plus LFO on your peak control side chain. That's what you want to pick. So it picks up both. I found that it's a lot easier to give a more type 
uh, analog LFO sounding type thing other than a digital harsh kind of cut to it. So you pick that and we don't want it to move with the sound. We want it to move against the sound. So when the sound hits, you want it to go down. And when the sound doesn't hit, you want it to go up. So because you want that pulsing effect where it's like, you know, just pulsing throughout the song. So you want to drop down on the mapping formula and pick inverted because you want it inverted from what you just linked it to. So drop down, uh, peak control, side chain, peak plus LFO, and inverted. That's your two selections on this. You want to hit accept. Now, this is where the tweaking and your own personal preferences come in. When you play, you can watch it, you know, it's it's already side chaining. You're, you're set, you're side chaining. But I'll explain to you these knobs um, right now to give you a better feel so you can actually use them how you want. Bass, all right, you have your peak and your LFO section. Uh, your LFO uh, goes by not the sound so much as the pulse of the beat. So you can, that's why it has the speed and uh, phase. That's really nothing you want to mess with. You just want to leave it pulled off back. And I assume that's tension. I don't know. It may or may not be, but that's what that is. Uh, your volume and your bass. Now, the ones you mainly want to mess with are going to be the bass and the tensions and occasionally adjust the speed just a little bit or less. You really don't want to mess with the volume the decay or the phase but so what we're gonna do here is you can see how that's way bumped up now over all the other uh, mixer track levels so we're gonna bump the bass up a little bit here and you can watch it pull that down and then bump it just a little bit on the LFO and then make it even with everything so now or for the most part even so now it's right at about the same height as everything else right at you know the 0 dB line on your mixer board so now we have a little bit better, but it's not pulsing enough. You know, it's not carrying over the beat as well enough as I'd like. Uh, so what you do is you increase the tension. I share it in between the LFO and the peak. And to me, that helps give it a more, like I said, analog sound. If you just do the peak, chain it to the peak, it doesn't matter what you do to the LFO. But if you chain it to both of them, then you can move both of them slightly so you kind of have this imperfect balance to where it's not so perfect. Uh, it kind of gives it a human feel to it, analog feel. You know, Some people say it's bull crap. Some people say it's not, but I feel that way, so that's how I do it. So increase the tension slightly. Sounding better. Let's bump it up a little bit more. side chaining with FL Studio in a nutshell. Um, it's a great powerful tool. I highly recommend it and what I was meaning about using it in your mixing, you don't have to have it so much affect the lead as much. You can bring the tensions down and have it mainly uh, just kind of knock it just a little bit so you bring your kick out more and you know so it doesn't give you that pulsing sound but you still get more of the kick in it which is good. <laughs> But anyway, I've already taken up 15 minutes of your time. <laughs> As usual, I'm long-winded and a little bit too detailed with these. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this taught you something. Um, you know, 
definitely this is a very powerful tool that you need to learn if you're wanting to do, be a serious producer by any means. Um, but that's all about all I got to say. So I guess I will see you next time. Take care.